What's up, Wikimaniacs? Welcome to another Monday episode, a Reddit reading, if you will. This week we have an OP who presses charges on their daughter's bully, a husband who asks for divorce and then immediately changes his mind, OP finds out that her husband is having an affair with their son's girlfriend, an OP gets their wife a sex book and ends up in the hospital, and if you're a patron, you get a bonus story. This one is going to be OP ends their five-year relationship over a glazed donut. But that's not it. It's Monday, so you know the amazing Underbaki had to do it for you. We got another segment from the amazing Underbaki. Reddit on Wiki starts now. Get therapy. And, uh, yeah, pretty clean. I gotta say, I surprised myself. I don't even know what to do. Smooth. Uh, Not bad. I gotta say, I no, don't no, mess it up. Mess it up on intro. I don't again. know Come if on. I love being clean <laughs> as much as I love the panic that I feel, uh, when it goes horribly Sean wrong. likes it dirty. Uh, yeah. I mean, he likes the chaos. Clean cut just isn't doing it for me. I don't know what to tell you. If you, if you, <laughs> if this is your first episode and you don't know who the fuck we are, much like many of our subreddit. Uh, <laughs> this is your boy, Sean. Uh, with me today, got J&J, not Johnson and Johnson. I got John and Josh. Say hello. What's bang, up? bang. I got to say, it's crazy to see just complete opposite facial hairs on both my co-hosts today. Josh, fully bearded up the huge. But John, looking <laughs> fresh and clean. Nothing on there. Just a bare chin. Love to see it. Just shave smooth like a newborn. It's funny you bring that up because uh, literally yesterday we're watching TV and I turned to Sienna and I'm like, thinking about grow- doing the mustache again. And she's like, sure, do it. I was like, handlebar mustache. And she's like, I can nope. do without that. <laughs> I'll tell you this. Now would be the time before the wedding would just before now the wedding, would be the yeah. time to just experiment with all types of things. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, I wanted I wanted to see if I still had a double chin and you know what? It's it's not there anymore. So that's Hell that's yeah, brother. I hey, wish I could be as brave. Looking good, dude. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Are we uh ready? To, oh, before we hop into today's story, there are some things that we must bring up. Uh first off, money matters, of course. So I'd love to remind everybody <laughs> that we do have a merch shop for you guys to get a bunch of merch and we do have a new drop coming in just a few days here, I think. By the time this drops, yeah. so April first, be on the lookout. Everyone's been joke, asking people. for the not a joke. <laughs> Everyone's been asking for the return of Octa merch, and it she's coming back in a big way. I gotta say, our our, oh, our yeah. graphic designer Janelle did her thing on this one, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, and uh, Josh, you have something else, also yeah. money and non money, uh, just important news, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to set me up for that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So uh, we've had a few people asking uh, for this on our YouTube channel. And sp- uh, I got to shout out Steffi Queen uh, specifically who commented this on last Monday. Shout out episode. to Steffi Queen and Walter, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we are officially announcing YouTube memberships. Whoa. Uh, so for those of you who don't want to, you know, use Patreon, I know it can be a bit clunky. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna offer YouTube membership. We're just gonna do the one tier. We're gonna do the the five dollar tier, and for that you'll get like bonus stories, uh, monthly bonus episodes, and uh, we think we can do early access. We're we're gonna we're gonna play around with some stuff, so it might not all pan out to be exactly what we want, just because they're two different platforms. We can only offer so many things. Uh, so for those of you who want to support the show, uh, you can click the join button. I think it is down. Uh, in, uh, just below the the screen here. So, uh, yeah, YouTube memberships for those who want to support us. Uh, we're gonna try it out. Uh, there should be some bonus content as this episode comes out there already. Uh, and then we'll write in the description exactly what's gonna be going on. So, super exciting. Oh yeah, nice. How'd I do? I didn't write any of that down. No, that so was beautiful. Just going up by memory. <laughs> Much uh, better than I could do, brother. Yeah. Yeah, don't leave us that responsibility, Josh, because we'd fumble (laughs) through all that. (laughs) I feel like I did, but okay. That was great. Thanks. All right. Anything else before we hop into the first story? Let's get it. Okay. I will say it is a bit, I'm bringing it back, a a little bit of the the classic Sean sandwich 
Uh, oh no. Something, you know, fine. A normal story. Two devastating stories back to back. <laughs> and then uh, okay. sort of fine. Good, uh, good story at the end. I can live with that. Uh, I will say the first, the book ends of this sandwich are paper thin. So if we do need to add something to the middle, <laughs> uh, I did bring an extra story just in case. Okay. This is OP presses charges on their daughter's bully. This is coming from r slash parenting cross posted by Miria the rat. Okay. I 40 year old male. Okay. That, that doesn't really, the sentence makes no sense. I'm just going to OP is a 40 year old male. <laughs> End of sentence. <laughs> Next sentence. Here we go. New sentence. New sentence. (laughs) My daughter has been getting bullied by this boy and his friends. He ripped my daughter's wig off and threw it in the trash. Ooh. The wig had all kinds of stuff in it. I took the wig, my daughter, and the receipt to the police station, and forgive me for this pronunciation, magistrate. Magistrate. I had to Google it. That sounds right. Okay. Yeah. I had to Google it. That is uh, like a, a judge for like smaller cases. Got it. Okay. All right. Uh, back to the story. I pressed charges for assault and destruction of property this morning. The boy's parents got my phone number and contacted me. They told me that they understand that the wig was expensive, but their son is only 15 years old and that he was just a kid. Ain't no excuse that they could not afford to pay the $600 to replace the wig. I told well, them- raise your kid better. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> I told them he needed to face the consequences of his actions. Edit. Yeah. My daughter shaved her head recently because she's losing hair due to a medical issue. That's why I got her a wig. We will be going to the doctor next month to find out the cause. I am her father, not her mother. Damn. Is there a question uh, attached to that? Or? No, that's just a, a, a parenting thing, I guess, just <laughs> okay. a, a story. That, but that's it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're definitely allowed to... You should hold them accountable, because how else are they going to learn, whether it be the parents or the, the child? Because that's bullshit. That costs a lot of money. It's embarrassing for her, who's, who's going through something right now. Uh, and, and yeah, awful, awful kids. Yeah. As I learned from uh, that one episode we did with Stuart, like we got to hold these kids accountable. So fuck them kids, man. So 15 is not an excuse anymore, bro. Like you're, you're getting there up in age and what? In the, a half a year, you could have like a, a worker's permit or some shit like that, or you could start yeah. working. So if I were you, I'd start saving up for some cash, go get a part-time job somewhere and you better pay that $600 back because that wig is expensive and it also has like an emotional attachment to the person. So- do better. Don't bully people. Be a better person. Yeah. And I do agree. 15 year old is technically, you know, uh, a kid, but also 15 year old is way old enough to know not to fucking rip somebody's wig off. And that's throw right. It in the trash. There's no, that's right. Hashtag Stan Ann. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> that's a, I that's mean, from Stewart's episode. Oh, okay. We stand with Ann. <laughs> I, I, we stand with Ann. I don't know Ann. <laughs> Or her. I'm still not there yet, but <laughs> sure. <laughs> I feel like that, uh, that when, what is it? Like that tweet or that meme that's like, I ain't reading all that, but I'm happy for you <laughs> or sad for you. <laughs> uh, but I'm just agreeing to get through this conversation. <laughs> exactly right. Uh, I, yeah, I got to say, 15 year old is, you know, in the grand scheme of things, a kid, but w- way old enough to know not to just fucking be disrespectful like that. Also, the parents are tripping if they are trying to get out of paying for the $600. What are you fucking doing? You pay for that. And then you make your kid pay you back. Uh, Yeah. You either wait for a year for them to get a job or you make them fucking mow some lawns or some shit. But yeah, don't try to get out of your kid's shitty behavior. That's uh, further teaching them that, uh, you know, that they can get away with with stupid shit like this. You know, you know, they could have, they could have probably, I think the parent is sensible enough. I'm not saying that they're going to say like, oh, yeah, you don't have to pay me back. But had that parent of the bully said like, hey, yeah, I agree. This is not right. Instead of excusing their kid's behavior, chances are a parent is probably going to be like, okay, let's let's work something out. But the fact that he straight up said like, hey, you should just ignore it. He's just a 15 year old. He probably doesn't know Mm -hmm. any better. Yeah, you probably they probably fucked up their chances there. So I don't blame I don't blame OP at all for doing that. Oh, hell no. I would do the exact same. Mm hmm. All right. All right. Are we ready to get in the first part of the sad sandwich, yo? 
All right, let's go. I had that a good a, day today. Let's ruin it. That was a quick first. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Bread. That's what that's what I'm saying. The paper thin. I, I brought an extra story just in case. Reminds me of the uh, the bread from uh, that Mickey Mouse movie where he's like slicing it extra thin. You guys know that <laughs> I think one? I know what you're talking about. I don't remember yeah, yeah, where yeah. that's from, but I see it visually in my head. Yeah, I'll look it up where it's from. But <laughs> is it Tom and Jerry? Uh, or was it actually I Disney? I think it's I think it's actually Disney. Uh, I know what you're talking about. I see it in my head. Are they rats? Are they? Is it Cinderella? I don't fucking know. Never mind. Let's fucking move on. I'm so sorry. Oh, Mickey and the never Beanstalk. Never watched. <laughs> oh, there you go. Mickey and the Beanstalk. Wait, you've never watched Cinderella? No. Nope. Damn. You go to Disney, aren't you? A- I'm not a Disney adult. I just oh. like going to Disney. <laughs> oh, you just like the theme park. I, I understand. <laughs> I love theme parks. Yeah. All right. Story number two. This is... A husband asks for divorce and then immediately changes his mind. <laughs> okay. This is coming. It's like, oop, never mind. <laughs> Uno reverse. I, I'm just I kidding. take it back. I take it back. I take it back. I take it back. Please. <laughs> no takesies, backsies. <laughs> this is coming from r slash relationship ground score advice cross posted by, you better believe it, Merrick Gitz 2011. Yeah. Oh yeah. Ah. Ah. Perfect. I fucking forgot about the button already. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta keep the button going. I've gotten a lot of Venmos. The 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 call to action worked. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta remember the sound, oh, brother. God. Uh, That's funny. <laughs> so this one is from Mary Gitz, 2011, but uh I didn't learn about it through Reddit. I learned about it through Josh because they tagged Josh on Discord, I believe. Yeah, they tagged me on Discord. And then uh, he let John and I know, hey, when the goat speaks, we must listen. So I said, this is an Am I the Asshole story. I got to get it to the right peoples. Wow. And I got it there. <laughs> uh, you got to love that. <laughs> A white Josh freaked out. I can't read this. I can't read this. <laughs> <laughs> I read the title and I was like, oh God, I spoiled it for myself. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, that's what happens to us when we get sent like yeah. Am I the Asshole stuff on social media. I'm like, I, can't, I can't look at this. <laughs> I only read the title. Uh, and I'm like, yeah. ooh, I, I hope even, he I reads this. That. Spicy. I yeah. see am I, and I'm like, I'm done. That's it. That's the most <laughs> I'll read. <laughs> All right, before we get into the second story of the day, I do have to say uh, a trigger warning for manipulation, abusive partners, and I think that's it. Uh, yeah, that covers most ab- of it. Yeah. Abuse is probably the, the most. biggest one. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. if that doesn't sound great, Feel free to skip this story and move right on to the third one. Timestamps are in the show notes. So namaste. Thank you. We'll see you in like two seconds. Here we go. My 23 female husband, 25 male, asked for a divorce, then changed his mind hours later. Background. We've been together for two years and married for one. We're both in our early 20s. The night of the bullshit... We had an argument about the distribution of chores that I think triggered it. I thought it wasn't fair that I was doing a majority of the housework on top of being a full-time student at university and having a job. He seemed to think that the chore distribution was fair and that I was overreacting. He came to a solution after all the bullshit that I'm about to tell you occurred, but essentially I was feeling overwhelmed and unheard and he was feeling stressed and confused as to why I thought this was a problem. Later that night, we were discussing the situation again, and I expressed how it feels like that he isn't listening to me and how distant he has become lately. Then he says there's a reason for the distance, and I ask him to tell me why. He says that he thinks we moved too fast. He doesn't know who he is, and he wants a divorce. He says he cares about me, but he doesn't love me. And that he's been feeling this way for a while. And then hours later, I was kidding. Never mind. (laughs) It was a joke. I'm joking. Oh, I'm joking. joking. (laughs) Uh, Now, I've promised myself since years ago that I would never try to make someone stay with me if they don't want to. Solid. Fair. Yeah. So as much as this hurt, I said, okay. I cried. He cried. I did ask if he wanted to try couples therapy before divorce, but he said no. We decided to sort out the details in the morning. I grabbed some blankets to sleep on the couch. He went upstairs to bed. 
to hey, me already. Get the bed? Yeah. How the fuck are you not getting the bed, first of all? Yeah, what the Insane. fuck? Insane. <laughs> In the midst of my sitting on the couch and crying and looking up apartments, what felt like hours later, I hear him get up and come to the living room. He sits down next to me and just says, I fucked up so bad. I freeze <laughs> when I hear this because I've barely processed the reality of what just happened. And I can already see where he's going next. I ask him to elaborate. And he says he doesn't want a divorce. That he doesn't know why he said that. And he's feeling the most regret that he's ever experienced in his life. He says that he realizes he fucked up and I don't have to take him back. At this point, I've experienced so much emotional whiplash that I've completely numbed out. I've already that was, the cr- first, that was the first word that came to me. I was like, whiplash right here. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck? You just had a conversation. It was very fina- final. And then he's just like, uh, I fucked up. Like, all right, why didn't you feel that two hours ago? <laughs> I've been feeling yeah. this way for a while. And then immediately it's like, wait, I don't love you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've already cried all the tears I could. Now I was just sitting there next to my sobbing husband and saying that, Yes, I would take him back, even though I had barely processed the fact that he had wanted to divorce me. I told him I wanted couples counseling and for him to get individual therapy, and he agreed. Yeah. I have, I've asked him about individual pull, individual pull, individual therapy. <laughs> Jesus, I tried to combine both words there. <laughs> I'm trying to think of new merch ideas. Yeah, I like yeah. it. <laughs> I'm into it. I'm always trying. <laughs> I've asked him about individual therapy in the past, but he never wanted to go until now. It is now days later. I've gone through all the stages of being mad at him, being depressed at my marriage almost ending, being insecure about myself, accepting the reality of this, feeling love for him, and feeling numb. Cycling through all of these emotions over and over again at random. We're searching for a couple's counselor, but a lot of them have wait lists right now. So in the meantime, I just want to know if anybody has ever been in a similar situation, does it get any better? Does the trust come back? I feel like I can't trust him at all now. When he touches me, I freak out sometimes because that's not the comfortable feeling that I'm used to whenever he touches me. It's feeling like he is suffocating me instead. I want to be here for him and help him through whatever mental shit that he is going through, but this has been affecting my work and my school. I left my dream school for him. I can't just keep prioritizing him above everything else when he clearly doesn't do the same for me. And yet, until now, he was he was doing the same for me. He's always been so sweet, buying me flowers, making dinner, going out of his way to make time for us. And before you scream abuse, please know that I've been in abusive relationships before and they have felt nothing like this. He's not like those guys. This is the first time he's ever done something like this. I just don't know how we can recover. Any advice about how to get through this would be appreciated. And before we we go off, there is an update, but uh, I'll let you guys give off your opinions first. Uh, This seems rough. It seems like one of those situations where they probably did like get married way too early and they just didn't, weren't like in the place or the, you know, place in their relationship where they were ready to take on to the next level but it seems like the issue really stemmed from the division of labor initially but as i kept hearing the story it it seemed like it started unraveling for me that he had like individual issues that he needed to sort out first and i don't know why he didn't want to communicate and and i don't know why he didn't want to take initial therapy at first or or getting better on that so that's kind of uh you know bad on him for that initial part i don't know what triggered him to have that remorse and be like okay i i don't want to mess this up like uh, i wonder if that's anything that's going to be added to the edit but uh i don't know i i, I don't think he's necessarily like evil <laughs> you know like for like the a lot of the the stories we read i see it seems like he has a lot of brewing personal issues that he just doesn't know how to handle himself uh, at the moment. So I'm, I'm kind of curious to see where, where this goes in terms of edits. I agree with a lot of what you said. I, I don't love that this conversation spurred out of you being honest about 
problems with your relationship, like the the chores split and being like, mm. hey, this bothers me. And his reaction was to be like, it's divorce, divorce, like yeah. uh, maybe Pretty he was quick. dwelling yeah. on it for a while. Yeah, <laughs> maybe he was dwelling on it for a while. Uh, and like, but it seems with the switch up, that seemed like a for me, it seemed like a reaction to that. And then him being like, oh, shit, I didn't actually mean that. And then going back. So he's he, to me, he's shitty in that way. Uh, and the, I don't wanting, love you anymore. Part is shitty as hell. yeah, dude. That, like, That's bad. And and I, I've gotten back together with exes before that I shouldn't have. <laughs> and the trust to build back to that is monumental. And like and, and mine were nowhere near this bad. <laughs> like like to have someone say, I don't love you anymore. I want a divorce. I don't even want to try to fix this. Like I couldn't even imagine the effort and time that you need to put into to mend this uh and like you can do it you can absolutely do it he has to put in the effort you have to put in the effort Mm -hmm. and it can happen it's just it's going to take a lot of time and effort uh it won't be a overnight thing and i mean i wouldn't blame you if you were just like well i i I can't get what you said out of my head and so like this is over that's facts and 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 he's gonna have to learn how to live with that because him cementing that uh that statement off the bat that is a lot to take in for, yeah. for a lot of people. And I don't know, it just always disappoints me that like people let, and this could be between men, women, doesn't matter. People like just let their emotions brew and just sit, like have it sit. And instead of just communicating like, hey, you know, you, you say that, you know, the, the, the load right now isn't even, but I feel overwhelmed. If you just communicate with, that par- with your partner in some sense, I, I feel like a lot of issues could be like at least, you know, remedied, but. I, I'm not just not a fan of people like holding on to their their shit until, you know, it spills over kind of thing. Hundred percent. All right, let's get into this update, y'all. Please be a good one. Uh-oh. Oh, <laughs> I know. Again, like, again. Oh, it, it is going to be a sad did, story, Josh. So we might so have well. given him a little bit benefit of doubt. So yeah. I, I'm I'm ready to change my mind for sure. Oh, I didn't give him much of a benefit of the doubt, but, <laughs> but yeah, you, you were hoping for I, a, a I, good. I did at least a good result. Yeah. And uh, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but let's get into it. <laughs> oh, oh shit. God. One year ago, it's got to be the probably biggest update or like longest distance between the updates. This oh, bitch geez. cheated. <laughs> uh. One year ago, I, 24 year old female, made this post asking for advice on how to continue my relationship after my now ex husband, 26 year old male. <sighs> Betrayed my trust by telling me he wanted a divorce out of the blue and then changing his mind just a couple hours later. As stated above, he is now my ex. Those of you who said he would repeat the same behavior again, you were right. Mm. Well, that, there it is. Yeah. On New Year's Day 2024, he said he wanted a divorce. He packed On a New ba- Year's Day? Yeah. <laughs> He said, I got He's a like, resolution. I got a year's resolution. Damn it, Josh. He packed up a bag and left to a motel and then came back hours later. I'll admit, <laughs> I was a wreck that day. I asked him if this was going to be just like last time, and he said no. I asked him if he felt mentally okay, and he said he felt fine. Mm. Now, I got on my knees and begged this man to stay. Not my proudest moment. And he looked at me with empty, vacant eyes and left. Jesus. I I was in tears for a couple of hours, but then I opened up this app to try and distract myself and saw that he made a, now deleted, please don't go looking for his account, post on the divorce subreddit about how he left me and felt bad, but did not regret it. Then, <laughs> damn. Then I want to read that post yeah. so badly. <laughs> yeah, do you have it? No, it says now deleted. So it's <laughs> damn it, oh, gone into it. the ether. Unless oh, no. some detective Wikimaniacs find it. Let if us. If anyone has that, please, please send that next. In. <laughs> <laughs> next Wednesday update, yeah, please. Holy. Then I went from depressed to furious. I called my landlord and told him that I was getting a divorce and I needed his help in changing the locks. My landlord was very understanding and helped me do so. Now, a few hours later, SpongeBob sound, I heard a knock (laughs) on the door and when I opened it, my ex-husband was standing there. 
Hell no. Nah. Kick that motherfucker out. <laughs> Jesus. Get off my property. I didn't even get a chance to tell him to leave because he immediately collapsed into my arms sobbing. Hell no. Nah. Dude, fuck <laughs> off. Yeah, fuck off, dude. The first coherent words to come out of his mouth were, quote, you're not going to take me back, are you? End quote. <laughs> Correct. Oh, bitch. Read it. I would love to say that I rejected him right then and there, but I did not. Uh, Even uh, after all of this, I was still hooked into his web of manipulation. So instead, I sat down with him and had a long discussion about how much he hurt me, how in the middle of working to rebuild the trust that had been broken between us, he completely destroyed any progress that had been made and found a way to make that distrust even worse. I don't remember the details of what he said, but he always knew what to say to get me to feel sorry for him. The night ended with me saying that I would take him back. He was smiling, saying he'd never felt so hopeful. He wrote me a love poem that night for the first time in years. Meanwhile, I had never felt so broken. And I told him that after he said he felt so hopeful. He then shrugged it off and said, I'd feel better in the morning. I I don't (laughs) know if this guy has ever cared about you ever. Uh, Yeah, from what it sounds like, he does. Yeah, this is some emotionless, like, manipulative behavior. Holy shit. Yeah. Sounds like a game to him. Yeah. Insane. I did not, in fact, feel better in the morning. During the next few days, while I was trying to pick myself back up, study for finals, and continue going to work as if nothing was wrong... He went back and forth every day on whether or not he loved me, whether or not he wanted to be married Uh, to me. He said, (laughs) he said he thought he loved the idea of being a husband more than he loved me. Well, well then go find another wife, (laughs) fucker. My last, this guy, this guy belongs in the streets. Like, yeah, (laughs) yeah. He he, deserves to be. He don't want to be saved. He don't want to be saved. No, no, he don't want to be saved. My last straw was when I reached out to one of his childhood friends who I had interacted with a few times and thought that I could trust to be honest with me. And I asked him if he had ever noticed any red flags in my ex-husband's behavior in his past relationships or behavior towards women in general. His friend assured me that he had never noticed anything of the sort. I thanked him and asked if he could please not tell my ex-husband I asked. Uh, since I was afraid of what he might do. He snitched. Yeah. When my ex-husband yeah. <sighs> came home from work that day, I could immediately tell that he knew. He opened the door so forcefully. He sat down on the couch next to me and told me he knew and said in a low, almost growling tone of voice, You don't get to be angry, you yeah. fucking piece of shit. You don't get terrible. to be angry about this. You are putting her through this mental distress. Fuck you. Oh, shit. This guy's one of the you know how, terrible. You know, oh. you know how uh, OP in the first uh, post, she was saying that, oh, he's not an abuser of some sort. He is. Yeah. yeah. He definitely is. This is emotional abuse. It's a, Oh, yeah. Just as bad. Holy fuck. And I probably should have put is. a trigger warning because it, uh, it, gets, uh, it gets worse. We can do it at the end and then you can just put it. Yeah, okay. (sighs) But he then said in a low and almost growling tone of voice, but I know you didn't mean any harm by it. I was frozen in fear and couldn't say anything, but then he grabbed my face, turned my head to look at him, and his eyes looked so cold, he said again, you didn't mean any harm by it, right? I nodded. Oh, no. Oh, my God. And forced myself. Oh, no. This is... yeah. Oh no, this is my true, true this is true crime shit. No, nope, yes. no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. Don't want it. No, nope, don't want it. Uh, I nodded and forced myself to answer yes. And I knew in that moment this man would kill me if I didn't find a way out of this relationship. If I didn't in fact kill myself first with how bad my mental health was getting after dealing with him insulting and belittling me day after day. I was genuinely starting to spiral into a dark place I hadn't been to in years. The next day, while he was at work, I packed a bag and wrote a note telling him I'm leaving and that I want his stuff out of the house by the time I get back. I left the note on the counter with my ring and spent the night at my mom's. It is an uncontested divorce filing by mail and should be finalized in April. I started the paperwork at my mom's house that first night of the separation. 
Since ending my relationship, I've gone to therapy and realized just how abusive and manipulative my ex-husband was. I also understand how broken he is, but being mentally unwell is not an excuse for abusive behavior. Facts. What he did to me was abuse, and I'm not afraid to say that anymore. I have reconnected with old friends and made some new ones. I've started doing things that I love again, things he never wanted me to do, like wearing red lipstick or eating mint-flavored things and going to concerts. What the fuck? Is the yeah, mint the, the mint-flavored things. I'm like, what is that about? I mean, all of them are terrible. That was weird to me. <laughs> I, I, I would definitely say. Wait, did he not uh, like quote unquote allow her to do those things? I'm assuming by the way it's written. Yes. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> I've realized I never wanted to be married again. I've discovered my polyamorous identity and have been uh, able to begin exploring that side of myself. I have plans to move out of my hated hometown that he dragged me back to. And I feel so much joy, freedom, and self-love than I ever have when I was in a relationship with my ex-husband. I won't be using this account anymore after this as I have no need to, but I want to thank the community and other Reddit subs that I have participated in. If I never made my original post, I don't think I would have realized just how awfully my husband or my ex-husband was treating me. Thanks to the support of hundreds of voices telling me I deserved better, I realized how true that statement was. I do deserve better, and now I have better. I also want this update to be a beacon of hope to anyone who has found themselves in a similarly emotionally slash verbally abusive situation. Life is so much better when you leave. There is hope. There is light on the other side of pain. Thank you again, Reddit. I am finally free. This is what so we, I get for seeing the light of humanity. So we I do somewhat get a happy ending. There is a happy ending, you know. They, well, I'm they talking just, about like I try to give him a bit. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and people reason. wonder why we have a slant towards men sometimes on this podcast. Yeah. It's just, just statistically. Uh, yeah, it's it's our own trauma built in uh, from hearing all the stories. True. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, like we let's focus on the positive. They're out of it. They're safe. Uh, sounds like they're in a better place. Uh, they're moving on to better things. Rediscovering themselves. Discovering themselves. And yep. Because, I mean, uh, from when you're... Uh, John, you kind of touched on this, marrying that young. You change so much between 20 and 25. Uh, like, yeah. it's crazy. So, uh, yeah, she's still got a few more years to, you know, keep discovering her, who she is and then hopefully find someone or someones uh, who she can be happy with. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Not we'll focus agree. on the good. <laughs> and that's not saying like just because you marry young that your shit's not going to work out. Absolutely Juliet and not. I got married. We got married when we were 23 and we were dumbasses in the beginning and we were just like, what the fuck? Like when there was a lot of like growing pains, a lot of things like we needed to discover. But hey, we matured and, you know, decade in and I feel like we have like the, the for us at least is the best relationship that we can have. Um, it, it, it's, it's just rough. And I think Josh touched on this earlier, uh, earlier today too. And, and I completely agree this guy. Yes. We want to focus on a positive, but it it was a game for this guy. And it was unfortunate that she was a, you know, she was a pawn and she was like a victim in his like sick game. And, uh, at first I was like, damn, why the fuck would you take him back? That's some stupid shit. But you know what? I don't, at the same time, I don't blame her, you know, like, uh, for someone like love can make you do a lot of crazy shit. So, um, and it seemed like, you know, foundationally, they've been together for quite a bit. Like they were kind of together during like those, you know, like the in, in their 20s. So that's that's kind of what she's known, like in terms of a relationship is. So um, to bring it back to the positive, I am really happy that she discovered herself. Marriage might not be a thing for you in the future, and that's OK. And um, as long as you are not or you're doing something that's like, you know, positive for you and living your life the best way you can. That's all you can get out of. Um, hopefully this bad chapter of of your life is like you've recovered from it and hopefully you know happy things come along with you in the future oh yeah uh yeah i got yeah looking at the positives of course extremely happy for the happy ending um you know the next chapter seems like it's going to be the best chapter yet but i gotta say that that was some fucking this guy might be top 10 but every Evil. Uh, Getting accepted and back. And I said that like this person, is, I was like, this person is not like the most evil. I take no, that No, we back. take it back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The more we learn, the, the more insane this yeah. guy. Yeah. Not only getting yeah. taken back the second time, but for every day for a week being like, I don't know if I love you. I love you. I don't know if I love you. I love you. Yeah. I don't know if I want to be married. 
I'm, I love being married. What the f- What kind of fucking? Uh, yeah. And then you know, yeah. Then the the worst part, the the breaking point was uh, quite literally. Uh, if you didn't think what was happening before was abusive, that is, that's uh, uh haunting. Like John said, some true crime cold case shit. And I don't, I don't, uh, I don't watch much like shows, but this gives me like this uh, Netflix show called Dirty John. Like it, it just gives me his Dirty John vibes. Like he's he's a con artist in a way. Like you know, like he's. He's pretending to love you. He's pretending to be like this caring person, this uh, emotionally available man, crying into your arms, rushing to your door. But really, it's just to manipulate you and play with your fucking, uh, you know, play with your heart and shit. So yeah. I don't know. I, I'm glad she got out because oh, yeah. there could have been a potential like things could have gotten a lot worse because he sounds really, really possessive. He wrote a love poem, said he was hopeful. You said, ah, I don't know. And he said, ah, you'll be fine tomorrow. You'll be, what? Right. What? You'll, You'll be fine tomorrow. Oh my fucking <sighs> god! This guy is top top ten. Worth, yeah, he'd make it into our March Madness for sure. Oh yeah, which is top. That it's gonna be too. <laughs> 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 uh, all right. Well, that Ooh, one was kind of heavy. a two parter. So maybe we don't need that extra story. So I, I'll I'll get into the next one. Oh, the next shitty one. The next shitty one. Exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, third story of the day, last shitty one. Let's get into it. This is Opie finds out her husband is having an affair with their son's girlfriend. Oh, God, gross. <laughs> oh, is this man. from The Sims? <laughs> <laughs> is it The Sims? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> oh, let, me, let me zoom in. Sometimes when you guys take screenshots of, uh, I appreciate you trying to get them into one picture, but then it makes it very hard to read. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) A lot have the links now, which is nice. Yeah, the links are good. I like the links. When the post is not deleted. (laughs) Yeah, 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 true. Yeah, Yeah, my friend sent me one. I was going to read it. Uh, You know, give him the homie straight shot to the podcast. Uh, (laughs) But uh, it got deleted by the time. I should have fucking screenshot it. He sent it to me two weeks ago. So June, if you're listening, I apologize. Shout out to June. Shout out June. Good month. (laughs) Even better man. (laughs) (laughs) All right. My husband of 20 years is cheating on me with our son's 18-year-old girlfriend. Oh, I knew it would break the Sean rule. It shattered the Sean rule. Yeah, not (laughs) even fucking fucking Barely legal. Close. Your Ah, marriage is older than this girl. That's insane. I'm going to use pseudonyms for anyone I reference in this post. I, 41 female, am a stay-at-home mom. My husband, 48-year-old male, whom we'll call Paul, works in finance. They broke the Sean rule, too, initially. I mean, oh yeah, 20 years ago. 48 oh, yeah. and 40? <laughs> So when I tell time. you guys the success rate, 60% of the time it happens <laughs> all the time. Every time. time. <laughs> oh, and uh, for the Sean rule, for those who ask every time, uh, anyone over 25 dating someone under 25 is the 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 basis of the Sean rule. Yeah. There's a lot of gray area and a lot of There's a lot of nuance. Uh, <laughs> the facts, uh, the rule may not always work, but... 60% of the time it works every Instead time. Of the time it works all the yeah, time. Exactly <laughs> fucking right. Uh, and yet here we jump into yet another example. <laughs> Can't wait. Ooh. We have been married for nearly 20 years. We have two kids whom we'll call Eric, our 18 year old son, currently a senior in high school and Mary, our 15 year old daughter. They are both the lights of my life. My marriage with my husband has grown somewhat stale over the years for a myriad of reasons, such as his work schedule or how I've aged poorly since we've met. And I got to say, none of that down talk, girl. I'm sure. Uh, I feel that's him talking. Yeah, that's probably years of uh, him talking shit. Damn. Our son, Eric, has a girlfriend, 18-year-old female, whom he's been dating since they were freshmen in high school. Oh. Bro, so she got to be like 14, 15 to her. Oh, my God. That's disgusting. We'll call her Amy. Eric absolutely adores Amy. She is his first love and someone that I've always considered as family. This makes Dude. the whole situation 
emotionally excruciating for me. <sighs> God. Last week, I inadvertently saw my husband's phone screen and got a glimpse of a text thread between my husband and Amy, our son's girlfriend, and I read what looked like a message of her telling him that she, quote unquote, misses sucking his cock. Oh. I froze in place in complete disbelief. I spent most of the day convincing myself that I must have misread what I saw. However, I did not misread it because over the last several days, I discovered a file on his computer filled with tons of BDSM porn. He clearly has a porn addiction. He also has saved photos of Amy from her Instagram onto his computer. Dude. <laughs> Although the pictures aren't inappropriate, she is fully clothed, it was still the proof I needed to confirm that I wasn't going crazy. I also looked at his phone during opportune moments and saw more of their interactions. I truly wish I had never looked. They were filled with mean, horrible things said at my expense, with him constantly comparing me to her. He would call me fat. Ugh. He would call me old, among other things, with Amy lolling. I've always had hunches or paranoid feelings that Paul had been cheating on me, but never in a million years could I have fathomed something like this. Last month, I found a thong in our bedroom that I know was not mine. I turned a blind eye to it, being naive and acting like it was maybe our daughter's, even though that made zero sense. Not only is he cheating on me, but he's betraying our son. I'm completely devastated. I don't even think words can adequately describe the dread, anger, shock I feel right now. I'm totally overwhelmed on how to handle this because obviously action needs to be taken, but I'm terrified of what kind of psychic blow this will be for my son. I have no idea on how to even broach this completely fucked up topic with him. I wouldn't wish this predicament on my worst enemy. I can't even believe I married this scumbag in the first place. And then my mind started to race even more, realizing that I started noticing specifically unusual behavior from him around the same time that Amy turned 18. Was he waiting for her to turn oh. 18 before, before? He groomed her for sure. Yeah. yeah. But she don't get a pass either. She's just as bad. Yeah. Well, not, I wouldn't say just Not to say bad, just as bad. But she's bad as <laughs> bad, well. She's, she's bad. bad as well. Yes, yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. But being, she's also a victim in the situation in a different way. Yeah, power dynamics. Sure. Uh, was he waiting for her to turn 18 before pursuing this affair? There's so many layers to all of this, and I'm completely paralyzed with fear and dread about all of it. None of it makes any fucking sense. How did this happen? Am I that much of a stupid idiot that I let all of this happen under my watch? Eric adores Amy, and the thought of revealing this sickening truth to him terrifies me. The impact on his young heart and mine could be devastating. My heart aches for Eric and Mary, who are completely innocent bystanders. I haven't confronted my husband about this because I'm frankly scared of the domino effect. I don't know who to turn to first about this. I share my story not for sympathy, but in search of understanding and perhaps advice from those who might have had to grapple with deep betrayal. Thank you for listening. God, this is bad. Yeah. Oh Eric's got to Eric's got to sleep with her mom. I think that's the only with her <laughs> with his girlfriend's mom? Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> no, I'm kidding obviously. Uh Man. No, keep going with that, Josh. Go with that bit. <laughs> no, cuz that that's also wrong. He's back. 18. <laughs> that's true. Um Fuck, man, that is tough. Because not not only is it like you're being cheated on, it's with your son's girlfriend mm -hmm. you've seen as a daughter, basically for four five years. years or so. Yeah, yeah. Like the 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 emotional impact that's got to have is crazy because you know it's gonna affect your son too when it comes out, uh, and that's oh, yeah. just gonna ruin him. And for the dad, like. Do you hate your wife that much that you would do this to your whole family? Like your your daughter's sixteen. I know this shouldn't be the the you know this is what it how to compare it to, but your daughter's sixteen. Imagine someone doing that to your daughter. 
dude. Like, just think about it for more than two seconds. Um, he don't think. He, don't, I he just, thinks with his dick. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't care about his kids, obviously. So yeah, I, th- fuck, I, I think uh, I don't. Know. I don't know. When I get the vibes of this guy, I feel like he does think because he manipulated this girl for. I would assume, you know, multiple years, at least years. Yeah, yes. at, at most si- since she was fourteen, which is fucking. Mm. Uh, obviously Disgusting. legally criminal. Uh, so yeah, I got to think that he might be thinking, but he just does not give a fuck about his family at all in the fucking slightest. Uh, no. yeah, it's <clears throat> crazy, uh, terrible to fucking have an affair in the first place, but to have an affair with your with kids, your son's girlfriend. partner is fucking, I don't even know. Like, you got to fucking hate him too, right? Like you got to fucking have, give no shits about him. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cause like what she said, imagine the fucking, uh, how would you react at 18 years old? Oh, I'd be devastated. I don't know if I'd ever be interested in fucking any sort. I, I think I'd be really fucking fucked up. You know what I'm saying? I think I'd fight my dad. Well, like, honestly, <laughs> for sure. Cause fucking yeah. you, you've been dating this girl for four years. Who knows how long this has been going on? Yeah. Uh, you're 18. Your dad's fucking 30 years older. What the fuck? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I think, I think the play is to, I don't know. I, Cause I'm torn between whether you confront them first or you, uh, you know, confront your son first. Cause either way, it's going to be a, a terrible mess. Right. Yeah. Honestly, I'd rip the band-aid. I don't know what the appropriate because order is. You know what I'm saying? That's there's not I mean. there's there's there, there's yeah. really no appropriate order because either way, the, this shit's gonna You suck. say rip the band-aid, but which one do you go with? <laughs> I'm ripping the band-aid and just telling the son right away. I'm just like, hey, your dad's a piece of shit. We're cutting both of them out. Oh, and your girlfriend's a bitch too. That's the only way. I don't know yeah. if, if it's the law like a, a family, like just fucking everybody in the in the room at once. I just, think you have to get her parents involved too. Honestly. Like just there's the, got to be some sort of yes yeah because because like she is also a victim we keep saying like she sucks so much and she is an asshole in this as well uh, but she is also a victim yeah she's been groomed sense. presumably but yeah I don't know what you do yeah I don't know. <laughs> I think maybe I would just fucking everybody involved and also I don't know have the cops and her parents on speed dial I don't fucking know what you do here but then that's embarrassing for your son also. If yeah. everyone's just fucking learning this news with him, that's fucking shocking. Oh man, it's just what a fucking awful situation. I yeah. I would I would love to know like Wikimaniacs uh comments, uh like what they would suggest in this scenario. Like which would you go with first? Would you go talk to the son first, you know, soften the blow and then uh confront uh, the girlfriend and and the father or like, what do you do? What's, what's the right option here? Violence. Yeah, I would honestly probably <laughs> fight if I was in this situation. Part of me, part of me is like, that's why you tell the other parents. <laughs> you, Let them do the, that they commit the violence. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Uh, I was trying to look for like some of the comments to see what, uh, you know, what people would do, but people are just talking about like similar situations that they've seen. That's, so sad that's also sad. Well. <laughs> oh, that is horrible. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. All right. Let's try Please to next story. Be yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll end it with uh, another. This is why I don't ever pick sad ass stories anymore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh... hey, here's another thin slice of joy for you. All right. <laughs> Holy shit. Can't wait. <laughs> OP gets their wife a sex book. And ends up in the hospital. Oh, in let's a good go. way. Like this is a, okay. Let's go. Yeah. yeah, good sandwich. We like this. <laughs> All right, mm-hmm. this one is. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. The last story, I never said where it was from and who brought it over. Uh, that's so disrespectful. Oh the last that story is... was coming from r slash <laughs> true off my chest cross posted by voluptuous ground score lime. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And I apologize for not doing that sooner. Yeah. 
That's How are they supposed up. to get to goat deer if yeah. you don't shout them out, Sean? <laughs> yeah, but I got to it. I got to it just later. You did. You did. I'm just bugging you. All right. This next one is <laughs> cross posted uh, or is from r slash r slash T I F U uh, cross posted by nobody. I found this one by myself. Uh, because Whoa. look at you! All the stories were too sad. I needed to fucking find a good way to end it. <laughs> Sean the goat, <laughs> play the sound. Bah. Yeah, bah. I did while you were talking. <laughs> should at least should at least send Sean Hemsworth or something. No, yeah, true. Because that, that's not me, you guys. I don't know. <laughs> uh oh, yeah, that's right. All right, here we go. This is today. I fucked up by buying my wife a book. All about sex. Nice. So, our sex life has been pretty dull for the past three years that we've been married. We're both in our second marriage. I lost my first wife and she got divorced. My late wife was very adventurous, but my current wife has only experienced plain sex because her first husband was boring. Plain You're sex. Boring. All missionary, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Exciting positions like missionary. Like and me on top, missionary. you on the bottom, <laughs> you and <laughs> missionary. Missionary. <laughs> you got to at least move the legs different angles, you know what I mean? So it's like, put a little spice yeah, in same, it. Same, same, but different. <laughs> yeah. Cro I'm, I'm not going to go there. Keep going. <laughs> Yesterday during lunch, we discussed our sex life, and she admitted that she'd only been comfortable with ordinary sex. So I suggested that we buy a book to maybe give herself some ideas. We went to the bookstore and bought a book. She spent three hours reading it in the bath. Oh, <laughs> later that night. Reading, right? <laughs> <laughs> later that night, around 9 p.m., she pulled me into bed for some fun. About an hour in, she started touching my bottom, then inserted our only vibrator, a small one. It was enjoyable until she suddenly got worried. Uh oh. She tried to get it out, uh, but oh, it's only pushed it in uh, further. Oh no. After struggling for about an hour, we get Damn! Out. Imagine an hour of just inside of you Vibrating. getting pleasured. <laughs> <laughs> Endless orgasm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we gave up and went to the hospital. Thankfully, it's like, I guess it's staying all night. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, the doctors quickly removed it after using some tools. And we promised to them that we would be more careful next time. <laughs> this morning, I skipped my usual bike ride because I am feeling sore. My wife just came in and asked if I want a bigger vibrator to avoid this happening again. And I'm not <laughs> sure what I've gotten myself into. <laughs> oh, no. I'll tie a string to it yeah. next time. <laughs> <laughs> Too long didn't read. Tried to spice up our sex life with a book and ended up in the hospital with a stuck vibrator. Wow. Hey. I wonder, I wonder what the percentage of hospital visits are. Uh Things stuck in yeah. places. I don't know if you guys watch Scrubs. 69%. Probably. That's the correct answer. Yeah. In Scrubs, <laughs> they have a bit where they have... Uh, uh, one of the main characters got his wife, forgot like to get a gift for their anniversary. And he mm. was like, oh, like since they were working and they were going to have dinner right after, he, like, looked, he went to the Lost and Found box and got her like a nice looking pen because she likes to <laughs> okay. write. And then the next day he was like, oh yeah, man, she loved it. I gave her a pen from the lost and found box. And all the other doctors were like, there isn't a lost and found box, <laughs> but there is an ass box, <laughs> an item full of things that were stuck in other people's asses. And they like started showing all like the, the x-ray images of like oh. a bunch of different shit in people's asses. I was like, oh, jeez, Penn Island, Penn Island. All right. Now, uh, I forget the order we do this. We'll skip Patreon for last. It Typically, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's time <laughs> yeah. for the amazing Underbaki segment of the week, boys. This week we have, is this poster okay? Mm. All right, let's go. For this segment, your boys will read two posts from the cringiest parts of the internet and be faced with the ultimate question, is this poster okay? 
And if you're an original, this is low key, uh, usually uh, a version of Does This Guy Fuck? Wow. Wow. Dent. Dent. All right. So, first <laughs> post is from r slash unpopular opinion. Classic. Here we go. <laughs> Not okay. <laughs> <laughs> Taco Bell can be relatively decent, wholesome, and healthy as fast food and does not deserve the hate that it gets. First off, I want to address all of the quote unquote Taco Bell makes me sick jokes, which I believe are just dumb jokes at best and an offensive joke at spicy foods at worst. Unless you have a specific allergy, spicy food does not make you ill. The amount you're jamming down your gullet does, though, which leads me to my next point. Almost everything at the menu at Taco Bell can be ordered with grilled chicken instead of admittedly greasy ground beef. Then it's topped with lettuce and tomato. If you went home, grilled some chicken and served it with fresh chopped lettuce and tomato, you'd say you made yourself a healthy meal. But for some reason, because it comes in a paper bag, We all love to hate it. Now, where I think people go wrong is how much they order. Taco Bell has been a blessing and a curse of being exceptionally cheap. However, however, the average $10 meal box you can order preset is 1,000 calories or less. Not great, but have water instead of soda. Again, go for chicken instead of beef, and I'd say it's a pretty decent meal. It's when you order the box plus an extra couple of tacos plus another crunch wrap plus the weird burrito they have in ads. Uh, there's only so many ways you could toast a burrito, guys. Stop trying to be fancy. And then try to eat all of this at once. Then you wonder why you're sweating and why your stomach hurts. So is this poster okay? Uh, not only yeah. are they okay, that's the most base take I've heard on this segment. Yes, <laughs> I'm crazy. actually in full <laughs> agreement. Yeah. Perfectly I, valid. Yeah, I love Taco Bell and I've never been sick from it. I, I never understood the meme. I, I don't get it that often because it's never you sound been like there. guys are a bunch of bitches. If you guys <laughs> can't take Taco Bell. Yeah, fucking but Taco. I think it's what he's saying. I think it's you eat so much because they are so cheap that mm-hmm. you get sick. And I, yeah. I agree with that. I think that's probably true. Um, so yeah, hell yeah, this guy's totally okay and a genius, I think. Yeah, as, as someone who's kind of been in a little more like healthier kick, um, you know, I still get Taco Bell, but it's a lot more like portion control now. So instead, before I used to get like those boxes or you know get a Crunchwrap Supreme, like a couple Doritos tacos or tacos locos, whatever you call it. Um, <laughs> you know, like I used to get a bunch of that and like get a big ass. Drink of freaking uh, Baja, Baja Blast. Blast. Now, <laughs> yo, and that shit, that shit is so good. I'm you not going to lie. I've never had you know, Baja it, Blast. I've always wanted same. to try it. I've never had it. It's so good. It's like one of my favorite like fast food drinks. But, you know, it's all about portion control. So, like, yes, you can get like chicken. You can get all these alternatives. But that's fine. But if you just get um, uh, like an item or two and not, you know, gorge like a whole a giant box. meal then that's okay <laughs> at the end of the day it's all about freaking balance it's all about um you know being disciplined and being you know just just portion control it's okay you don't have to restrict yourself people like eat what you want to eat just in moderation yeah it also like this poster like sort of reminds me of like sometimes i'll see on tiktok of these uh not to be you know racist but these white people being like <laughs> Oh, Mexican <laughs> food or ethnic food is so unhealthy. You know, why blah blah blah. And I'm like, and then they they'll try and say like tacos. And I'm like, taco is literally probably less carbs than like whatever and much tastier. Uh it's, it's basically a burger in a wrap, which is less it's carbs. It's the perfect <laughs> it's literally the perfect food group. Cause you get the yeah. carbs from the tortilla, depending get corn because it's uh, I think it's corn less is a little fucked up healthier than flour. And then you get your proteins, you get your veggies, yeah. and then you get like, cheese. you know, like cheese, your dairy. It's literally the perfect food group. And then they'll be like, Mexican food is so unhealthy. And then they'll try and promote something like fucking regular, like, I don't know, fucking elote. <laughs> and then be like, oh, fucking 
cowboy caviar or whatever the fuck it was. And I'm like, yeah, this is just, uh, you're just changing the name of an already made Mexican food. I don't understand. <laughs> oh, frustrating. So I'm, I'm yeah. with this poster. Uh, I would say, I'm, Oh yeah. hundred percent fucks. Uh, more oh, than, yeah. more than being okay. They absolutely fuck. And you know what? <laughs> after you guys fucked, you're going to get Taco Bell after. Yeah, so you get yeah. more energy to burn that shit off. And the Taco Bell sauce. Oh, hits. What is it? Diablo? Oh, the Diab- Diablo. Mm. Oh, so good. Oh, mm, also, mm, I just mm, called mm. it taco sauce. and you guys That's okay. That's all right. We, okay I mean, technically, <laughs> technically Taco Bell's, it, they call it sauce. It's a hot oh. sauce. Yes. Oh, it's okay when Taco Bell Well, it's Bell more of a hot it. sauce than a sauce. So- we're moving on. <laughs> the salsa. It's not a salsa. It's a sauce. Second post is coming from r slash angry. Uh, oh, yeah. Interesting. Is it really called r slash angry? Yeah, we might need to look more into that Holy one. shit. I've never yes. been there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like putting on my notes right now. <laughs> Here we go. Taxes piss me off every Agreed. year, every single fucking year. I try to add more money uh, when they take out taxes at every paycheck. And every year I get butt fucked by the government. I hate that I All the time. barely get 1K in taxes. I'm single, work full time with retirement, no children, and I still get the short end of this stick. I don't know the IRS or the state shit. I do not want to cheat the system. I really fucking don't, but I swear to God, these motherfuckers make me want to sell ass, make an only fans or fucking sell drugs. No, I w- hell yeah. <laughs> sell drugs, baby. <laughs> but fuck. Can I get some fucking money? Yo, can I get a goddamn crumb? At least two K. A silver? I'm just fucking flabbergasted. I str- I'm straight up appalled. I'm fucking defeated over here. I want to cry so bad. Bills. Me too. Groceries. Busted ass yes. car. And now the government. Mm. What do you want from me? This is crap. Fuck you, IRS. Taxes are fucking crap. I wish someone would just abolish it. Next year, I'm going to make them eat shit and get more money from my paycheck instead of taking out taxes. Fuck you, IRS. Revolution! (laughs) Let's start one. Is this poster okay? (laughs) Absolutely. 100%. At least you're getting some money back. I've (laughs) never seen money back for a while now, and it hurts. It hurts no matter how much I fucking give to the damn government. They fuck me out the ass. No lube either. It hurts. I think as a society, we have an unhealthy view of what taxes are and what they should be. <laughs> like taxes in themselves are supposed to be good things that help, you know, elevate society. We live and in are- America, Josh. <laughs> I'm saying what that should be. <laughs> like, uh, I, I forget which Nordic country it does, but they, they like do your taxes for you. And then they send you like uh, a pamphlet of like, this is where your taxes go to. And it shows you like a percentage of like, mm-hmm. this went to roads, this that. went to healthcare. And like, it's like, yeah, I want that for me. You know what I mean? I want to know exactly where my taxes are going instead of having mm-hmm. to flip through thousand page, uh, you know, bills to find out, Oh, you know, we spent this much money on whatever it happens to be. Um, and, and like, I think we should get to more transparency and, uh yeah hell yeah give more people back their money uh i i agree our government's that. too busy banning fucking tiktok than doing fucking positive changes <laughs> taxing up us out the ass Fuck. i Don't fucking even. hate the government <laughs> and i worked started. for you bitches for a long time <laughs> i gave my fucking body for you guys and it's all you do to me you give me more taxes i pay for more shit i ain't never seen no goddamn set no improvement in the roads <laughs> there's bumps all over the road i run into so many goddamn potholes every day you Fucking piece of shit, government. I hate you guys so much. You live in Texas, dude, which makes it so much worse. Uh, (laughs) All right. Well, that's it for this episode, boys. Sorry I had to hit you with the sad sandwich there, but uh, there's a little little bit of joy on the outside. It's just very thin layers. It was a sad donut, too, when we ended the episode. Yeah. Yeah. Sad donut in the Patreon. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Before we end the episode, I do have to get to some Venmos. Look, guys, the floor is yours. Like I said earlier in the episode, (laughs) uh, the call to action worked. Uh, People are, uh, you know, are wanting the goat sound. And I've received nothing less than positive goat news. So truly. Wow. Okay. Not not one Venmo (laughs) for uh, removing the goat noise. Ooh. So you love to see that. Let's hear it. All right. You want to hear it? 
Oh, yeah. Play it. Oh, yeah. Play it. There it is. All right. So let's read through all these Venmos. Thank you guys so much for hitting us up on there. Uh, and again, I that goes straight to the business. Uh, unlike before, as God intended, <laughs> when I got 100% of it. <laughs> all right. So this is coming from Rory Kolaluka Photo. They are, ooh, let me fucking wrap this font so I can eat it, read it easier. Eat it. Eat it. So you can eat I'm it. I'm fucking hungry, guys. Uh, I want to put it in a wrap. We were talking about donuts. It got me all fucked up. <laughs> and Taco Bell. And everything. Taco Bell, everything. <laughs> all right. Sending this through my business Venmo. So hopefully y'all can give me a shout out. Also, please keep the goat sound. Much love for y'all. Mm. So yeah. I'll say, Rory, make, uh, next time send the, uh, the app for your social media. That, that might be even better. What, so, was, uh, what was their name initially? Rory Kolaluka Photo. Hey, mm. can we, can, can we, and then next time we meet up, can we get a picture from <laughs> Hey, that would be <laughs> Rory. Tight. True, yeah, yeah. That'd be tight. All right, Rory uh, sends $1. Next up. Hell yeah. We got Sarah who wrote, my friend got me a rich motherfucker subscription for my birthday <laughs> so I can keep friend. sending y'all Venmos. After listening Ooh. to the extra stories on 311, Josh and John and Sean is the goddamn <laughs> best ice cream in the world. Purple Mountain Majesty is my kryptonite. They sent three dollars. Damn. Wow. Sarah okay. and your, cool. your friend. Your friend is Go. a good friend. Also, uh, with the YouTube memberships, I think you can gift memberships. So Whoa. there's <laughs> more mm. chances for uh, gift friends away. in the community to gift uh, memberships. Just don't, I'm not sure exactly just how don't they share. Work. Yeah. Not sure how they work though. <laughs> Burnout, share your information. <laughs> yeah, we're like Netflix here, guys. You can only have one per household. I'm sick of these couples sharing Patreon accounts. Absolutely criminal, actually. <laughs> Next up, we have Savannah who writes, please bring Octha back or bring Octha merch back. I miss her. Oh, we got April first. April first, Savannah. April first, Savannah sends it in. four dollars and sixty nine cents. You gotta love nice. it. Nice. Oh, yeah. Next up, we got Maddie who writes, "Lol, I sent in a review on the website, and I am fulfilling my duties as a Wikimaniac. So here is four dollars and twenty cents plus an extra sixty nine cents." Love yeah. y'all again. Let's, let's go. Go blaze it up. Blaze it up Two in a row. Well bricked up. P.S. <laughs> I want some sticker packs for my water bottle merch idea. Ooh. So yes, we will be adding stickers back to the merch store uh, just by your request. Look how look how quickly we do things when you Venmo me. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy how quickly we get things done. All right. Next up, we got the original Venmo goat, Effie. Hell yeah. I'm defending my dissertation on March 27th. Send me good vibes, please. Your girl is oh. exhausted beyond belief. Y'all have been a huge source of relief. So thank you guys. And Effie sends $5. Shout out to Effie. Dissertate Give her, the fuck out of that dissertation. Dissertate that shit. Sending Many. nothing but good vibes. Feel like a, a spirit bomb in Dragon Ball Z. Rest in peace, Akira. <laughs> Sending you all the good Lend vibes. Lend me your energy. Give me <laughs> some of your energy. And here, you, Effie, because you're the goat, you can have this for your energy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. You got this shit. Let's fucking go. Tell us when you pass. Or is yeah. that how it goes? I honestly don't know, but I'm going to assume yes. <laughs> me neither. Yes. Let's do that. Tell us when you defended the fuck out of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Next up, we got Jennifer, who writes, <clears throat> S-E-A-N is the only correct spelling of the name. Thank you very mm. much. They send $5. Thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate that. Uh, you cut out there, Sean. I couldn't hear you. Did you what was uh, the spelling? I'll assume A they said your name funny, S -E -A -N. though. S-E-A-N. S-E-A-N. The perfect, the perfect amount. Just once. <laughs> Sean, Sean. Just once. No, he spelled no. it twice, though. Didn't <laughs> yeah, he? I spelled it twice, but yeah, it's just twice. once. It's just once, really, though. So, so Sean, Sean, Sean. Fuck you guys. Okay. Right, he spelled it twice. It makes it <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have Walter the Imaginary Friend. <gasps> wow. Invisible. They write, uh, Get it right. keep the goat sound. It makes me so happy. <laughs> Hell yes. Walter the Imaginary nice. Friend sends $5. 
Thank you, Walter. Invisible. I'll tell my therapist about you. <laughs> Next up, we got <laughs> Jenna who writes, hi, guys. Thank you guys for all the wonderful content on my way to and from visiting my boyfriend. Smiley face. Jenna sends six ninety nine. Thank you, Jenna. There's a sixty nine. There's a sixty nine there in there. Jesus, there's a sixty nine. There's a sixty nine. Yeah. Yeah. Technically speaking, in the boyfriend. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right. Next up, we got Betty who writes, "Nancy is my favorite. Here's seven dollars and fifty cents. Please buy her a beverage, but not from Starbucks. They are the worst." Betty sends seven dollars yeah. and fifty cents, and I gotta agree with you, Betty. Support local. And also support local, baby. Absolutely. Nancy, thanks you. Again, that is going to the business, unfortunately, but I will make sure to buy her. He will deduct a, a $7.50. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll take her out. Yeah. I'll get her a treat. Jessica is up next. They write, so here for the Nancy content. I am now Ooh. starting the Happy Nancy Fund and sending $1 every day. So here is yesterday's <laughs> and today's since it's like 2 a.m. over here. Uh, and then they proceed to send uh, happy Nancy fun uh, messages, HNF. Uh, and they've so far uh, <laughs> donated $8. So thank you so much, Jessica. Hey, yeah. Nancy's going to be stoked go. to hear all the happy messages. <laughs> so they must be uh, $10 tier patrons. That's exactly then. right. That's your dose. That's for the Nancy content. Yeah, if you're was. wondering where all the Nancy content has been, you're going to have to <laughs> fork it up. That's right. Absolutely rich motherfucker content. <laughs> All right, next up, we got Lauren, uh, a different Lauren than uh, the goat Lauren. The OG. The OG Lauren, but uh, a Lauren nonetheless, so thank you. Uh, I especially like their message. They write, one trained crow's worth of money for each of you. They sent $15. <laughs> we love a crow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, let's oh, go. That's good. Uh, and then we got Mackenzie, who writes, I'm here to defend the new goat button. I personally Ooh. love it. And because I love you guys, keep your, uh, keep being yourselves and keep making amazing content. Smiley face. Mackenzie sends $21. Thank you, Mackenzie. Damn. Oh. Love oh. you, Mackenzie. The goat is staying. I got to say. Yeah. <laughs> the, there's a lot of, of tally marks towards the goat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And next up, we have another Venmo goat, the OG Lauren. For both <gasps> February and March... Would love to blame the fact that February was a short month, but it's already mid-March and I'm just now getting to it. So, you know, anyways, love you boys. Lauren sends $60 again, Lauren. Oh my God. I, I beg of you. Chill. To, I beg of you. Chill. I mean, if you're doing great, we love it. Uh, but also you don't have to, you know, Holy spend your money shit. elsewhere. We love you regardless. Get you a haircut. Get your nails did. <laughs> Jeez, but those, I, I mean, yeah, I, I, I vibe with her being like, it's halfway through March and I'm like, damn, Feb February's gone. I felt that <laughs> the other day. <laughs> when, I was like, shit, rent is due. When she wrote like, February it. is a short month, while technically right, it was also technically the longest February. The longest yeah. February in four years, yeah. <laughs> I was telling so my coworkers you. how I work for free that day and you should leave me alone. <laughs> Dude, I feel for everyone who has their birthday on February 29th. Shout out you guys. Uh, it must be tough. Uh, the odds <laughs> that one person that listens to us having a February 29th birthday it's, has got to be astronomical. It's got to be high. There's got to be at least one of you. You think one? Okay. I think at, at, the, right. at least one, right? We'll see. We'll see. I, I don't guess. know. <laughs> but anyways, that's all the Venmos. Thank you guys so much. J&J, &J, any other comments, reviews? Oh, man. I had so many funny YouTube comments I wanted to get to. <laughs> uh, people are saying the Cholo accent was fine. Okay. okay they appreciated okay. your your concern, Sean, but uh, they they said it was fine. And I also, most of them liked John's Cholo accent. So. It, it was good. Yeah, I was just concerned. It was contextual, okay? It was contextual. It was, it was contextual. Um, and then we talked about uh, pigeons, crows, and geese on that episode. Yes, we did. And how Sean wants to revert back to carrier <laughs> pigeons and, and to rid ourselves of technology. And uh, Annie Schulzengel, I butchered that for sure. I apologize. Uh, they said the year is 2030. We now receive all Reddit on Wiki content as comics <laughs> etched in rocks and delivered by carrier pigeon. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. That's how the way I originally envisioned the show is on rock. So yeah. thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Um, and then Jesse Lee. Two three three one said ETA means edit to add. 
It'll be fucked. Oh, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Mm, that, that makes, makes a lot of sense. sense. That's yes. the time of okay. arrival. For the sure. Time of yeah. arrival. For sure. I have yeah. arrived. <laughs> uh, and they just say, also to add, the crow story had me cackling. Uh, ha. You are ha. so right about geese being vicious. Oh, my God. One of my friends was a leash kid. And he told me that when he was like six years old, his mom took him to the park with one of those little backpack leashes. Nice. So you, you guys know what I'm yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With a little monkey backpack. Those are so yeah, funny. Yeah. She had to go to the bathroom, so she tied him to a pole outside the restroom so he wouldn't wander off. Crazy <laughs> thing to do. Oh. And while she was using the restroom, a little group of geese bullies, uh, a little group of Bull. geese bullies came up to him and started attacking him, and he couldn't run away because of the leash. So he just had to wait for his mom to come out. Uh, she shooed the geese away and then in a wild turn of events started yelling at him asking what he did to provoke the geese and immediately took him home from the park. Bitch, you and trapped he, me! <laughs> and that's how he was traumatized by geese. Holy Damn, shit. Damn, that kid gotta get therapy, bro. Oh, man. That is awful. Could you imagine doing that to your kid? <laughs> I then blame and then him in the him. end. <laughs> Have him go to the restroom with you, right? Yeah. Um, and then Snailer Pimpson said, did y'all know that all of y'all's two front teeth are similar with the right one being a little longer than the left one? Starting to think there's a conspiracy here involving cloning or skin suits. It's just the thought now might become a theory later. Mm. Dot, dot, dot. I've never noticed that. You before. know, every once in a while, I forget that, you know, like how zoomed in and how HD this can get. And uh, I'm not <laughs> self-conscious. And then we'll read one of these comments and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. You can see every fucking uh, you see real. Close. You guys got you guys got your your right tooth is longer. Is that what it is? I'm not going up close. My teeth are not that great. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, My teeth aren't great either. I used a no, fun fact. My dentist used to brag about my teeth and then my wisdom teeth came in and fucked everything up. Same dude. Same. <laughs> like, oh my God. It's so refreshing to get like a nice set of teeth like this. These are so fucking symmetrical. They're perfect. Yeah. And then one year they just got super fucked. I was like, I, the one thing I felt pride about. <laughs> I've never gotten my wisdom teeth taken out. Neither have I. I mean, if they haven't caused any damage or pain, I think they're fine. They said yeah. something about like it grows an op- my dentist says it grows an opposite way that it'll never get impacted. So he said it's very rare that that usually happens. Oh, Gucci gang. Interesting. Yeah. So that's... she's like, yeah, you might never have to deal with that. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I have three of mine in and the one has just never come in. So I don't know what's uh... going on there. <laughs> but they fucked up the bottom parts of my 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 teeth. So yeah, my, mm, my bottom row goes like... Uh... Yeah, all crisscrossy now. No, well, it's straight. <laughs> it was straight. And now it's just in the front. It's like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's mine, too. Love that mm. for us, Sean. Uh, that's wild that we are the exact same with our teeth. That's good. <laughs> oh. uh, but yes, that is uh, YouTube comments. I wanted to do that because then we can shout out the YouTube memberships again. If you want, go subscribe. Hit the join button. We'll describe in better detail what that'll involve uh, on, on our YouTube page, obviously. So go check it out. Hell yeah. Oh, speaking of YouTube comments... For this week's episode, comment, because Sean did a sad sandwich, comment us your favorite sandwich for the algorithm. Oh, ooh, I love that. Okay. Quick, favorite sandwich, real quick. Uh, Reuben. What's, what's that called? The Reuben? Yeah, I think of Reuben yeah. as you know, sauerkraut. Yeah, that. yeah, 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 that, yeah. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, yeah. Or a Montreal smoked. Uh, smoked meat sandwich. Yeah. Those are good. I love a fancy sandwich every once in a while, but fucking the perfect sandwich that I could eat literally every day is just a fucking grilled char charbroiled pork banh mi. I could fucking eat a banh mi every <laughs> single day of my goddamn life. That Hell baguette yeah. though. That baguette. My God. The butter, the pate. Yes. The pickled vegetables. I don't even like pickles, bro. It's so good. It's fucking perfect. <laughs> Give me a nice toasted chicken bacon ranch with a thick applewood smoked bacon. Mm. Ooh, that sounds delicious. All three winners in my book. But yeah, Damn. Mm-hmm. comment below. Uh, if you need more Reddit on Wiki, we'll be back Monday. Unless you're a patron, then we'll be back Sunday. Uh, what the fuck? Today is a Monday. We'll be back fucking Friday <laughs> if you're a patron Thursday. We'll see you guys next week. Later. Bye. Bye. Get therapy.